Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Artdecessor tutorial on the generation of invoices using the Artipay service. A successfully generated invoice and receipt are the outputs of this application. The Artipay service hosted within the Artdecessor system is a trusted online payment platform designed for seamless electronic payment for services offered by the State Department of Lands and Physical Planning across the country. This system functions by enabling users to create invoices for all land-related payments and stamp duty fees. The RDPay feature is accessible to a private user as well as professionals such as advocates. To begin with, you will open your browser of choice and type rdcessa.lands.go.ke Once you land on the home page, you'll have to register or log in to the RDCessa platform. On the login page, you'll need to key in your RDCessa ID, company registration number, or national ID number. Enter your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you'll be provided with a one-time password code which will be sent to the phone number and email you use to register with on the platform. Type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click Login. On the dashboard, you'll find a number of services listed under various departments within the State Department. Kindly note that payment for services initiated on our disaster will have their invoice generated within the process. There will be no need to generate separate RDPay invoices as this will result in duplication. To access the invoice generating feature, you'll navigate to the left panel and select RDP. This appears as the third option. Here, you'll find two categories of invoices, the RDP service and the SNAM duty. The RDP service category enables users to create invoices for land payments such as the search and charge registration fees while the stamp duty option caters for both land and non-land related stamp duty payments that have been determined by the assessor of stamp duty. This tutorial is going to cover both categories. The first feature is how to use the RDP service. To generate an invoice for land fees, go ahead and click on the RDP services. Upon doing so, you'll be navigated to the applications page. This page contains a comprehensive summary of all your payment history and receipts. The lists are categorized depending on the payment status. We have two tabs namely, Unpaid Invoices and Paid Invoices. The Unpaid Invoice tab features invoices that you have generated but have not been paid for, while the Paid tab contains settled invoices with their respective receipts. To generate a new invoice, click on the New Application button on the top right hand corner. You then be navigated to the frequently asked questions related to this process. These FAQs give you an idea of what RDP is, how it works, the payment methods accepted by the system, and other important information. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to familiarize yourself with the important aspects associated with RDP. Once satisfied, go ahead and click on Next. You'll be navigated to the new application page. Here, you'll first be required to select the department offering you the service. Kindly know that the fields that have an asterisk sign alongside them are mandatory fields to fill, failure to which you'll not be able to generate your invoice successfully. Go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow to populate and select the department. Next, you'll be required to select the county and offices where the service will be offered. Starting with the county, click on the drop-down arrow to select and populate the location. You'll also be required to specify if the service is to be provided under a land registry or station. A land registry is a land office that offers land registration services, while a station offers other land services that are not registration services. In some counties, all these offices are housed within the same premises. But in others, land adjudication offices, for example, are hosted separately. Click on the drop-down arrow to populate and select the office. The next field is the parcel details. Here, you are required to select the category of the parcel. Same parcel means that you are generating an application invoice for one parcel, and as such, you won't be required to enter the parcel number each time you are choosing the process type and payment item. On the other hand, 
multiple parcels cater for applications such as search fees for more than one parcel. As such, you will be required to enter a different parcel number each time you are choosing the process type and the payment item. We will proceed with multiple applications under the same parcel option. Next, you will be required to enter the parcel number. Kindly enter the number as it appears on the ownership documents. The next step requires you to select the process type and then select the payment item. You will also be required to enter the amount charged on the application. If the fee payable is unknown to you, kindly confirm the correct fee from the land office. If satisfied with the details, click on Add. Repeat this process for the different payments required for the same parcel. Once satisfied with the details, proceed and click on Next. The last step is the verification of the details that you have provided. Go through them and ensure the details provided are correct. You can go back by clicking on the county details if you need to edit any information. Once satisfied, go ahead and click on Generate. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve whether you indeed want to submit the request. Go ahead and click on Yes. You'll then get a message on a pop-up box affirming that the application has been submitted successfully. Click on Close and the generated application will populate under the unpaid invoices. On the generated invoice, click on the View button and you'll be presented with two options. There is the invoice and the receipt. The receipt option is not active until the payment has been made. When you click on the first option, you will be presented with the invoice and as you can see, the recently created invoice reads unpaid. Below is a unique invoice number tied to the invoice generated. The invoice also contains the county, registry and the recipient. You can go through the payment description to note how the items have been listed. Kindly note that the payment processing is facilitated through eCitizen and for each generated invoice, there is a convenience fee. Use the back button to return to the application invoice page. To select the invoice, click on the pay button and the payment information will populate below the invoice. The first thing you'll see is the applicant's name and phone number. Below that is the payment reference number and the total bill. This reference number should be used as the account number when paying using the official government pay bill number 22222. Ensure your payment matches the exact invoice amount to avoid overpayments or partial payments. The next section highlights various payment methods acceptable on the AgriPay system. They include Consolidated Bank, Equity Bank, Real-Time Growth Settlement, Kenya Commercial Bank, M-Pesa and several others. For amounts exceeding the M-Pesa limit, you can use the bank or the RTGS mode of payment. Immediately you select either of them, the system generates a guide on how to make the payment. Under M-Pesa, there are two options. There is the M-Pesa Express, which allows you to edit the applicant's phone number to whoever is paying for the invoice. When you click on Initiate, whoever is paying the invoice will receive a notification on their phone highlighting the payment item and the total bill. They'll be required to enter their M-Pesa PIN for them to pay for the invoice. The other option is the M-Pesa Pay Bill. Kindly verify the invoice reference number and accurately input it during the payment process. Upon paying, click on the Complete button and the system will automatically synchronize your payment. Immediately after successful verification, the invoice will transition from the Unpaid tab to the Paid Invoices tab. Click on View. You'll notice that both the Invoice and Receipt options are active. Select the invoice and you'll see that it has been updated to Paid. You have the option of downloading the invoice for record-keeping purposes. When you view the receipt, you'll notice that it has similar information as the invoice. You can download the receipt for verification purposes when seeking the service you have paid for at the relevant registry or station. The next section of this video will look at how to generate stamp duty invoices on RDSASO. To generate and settle an invoice calculated by the assessor of stamp duty, go ahead and click on the stamp duty category. Upon doing so, you will be presented with two categories, land and non-land stamp duty. 
Land stamp duty is a charge levied by the Kenyan government on legal documents for land-related transactions such as long and short-term leases. On the other hand, when land stamp duty involves generating invoices imposed on particular processes that are not related to land such as transfer of shares. Click on the first category to generate an invoice for land stamp duty. You'll be navigated to the Payment Histories page. To initiate a new application, click on the New Application button on the top right-hand corner. You'll then be navigated to the Frequently Asked Questions page. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs at your own discretion. If satisfied, go ahead and click on Next. You'll be navigated to the Application Details page. Here, you'll first be required to select the location details. Starting with the county, click on the drop-down arrow to populate and select the location. You'll also be required to specify if the stamp duty service is to be provided under a land registry or station. Click on the drop-down arrow to populate and select the office. Repeat the same steps to fill in the stamp duty process. In this instance, we are going to select a discharge. The next section requires you to select the application category details. The first category is the parcel number. This field requires you to key in the number. The second aspect is the debenture category. This requires you to enter the supplemental or collateral principal instrument. In the case of the third option, which involves both the parcel number and debenture, you will be required to add the parcel and the collateral. In the case of this tutorial, we will proceed with the last category. Here, you will first be required to key in the stamp duty amount. Kindly enter the amount as featured on the assessment slip. Next, you will be required to add the parcel number. Make sure you enter the number as stated in the ownership documents. You will also be required to specify the size of the land by entering the area size against a particular unit of measurement. The size should not include more than 3 decimals. Click on Add and the details will be populated below. You can use the Remove button in case you made an error. Next, you will be required to enter the debenture details. Here, you will have to start with the supplemental instrument. You will also be required to enter the assessed amount for the debenture. The next section requires you to enter the charger details. You will first be required to indicate if they are registered on a disaster. If yes, you will have to enter their Ardecessor ID, click on Search, and the system will automatically populate the details. In a case where the charger is not registered, the applicant will have to manually key in their personal details. That is, their name, type of identification, identification number, and their KRA PIN. Click on Add to populate the details. In this scenario, the charger is not registered on Ardecessor. So, go ahead and manually key in the details. The last section is on additional details. This field is optional. It requires you to indicate any further information about the stamp duty. If satisfied with your application details, click on Next to navigate to the Documents page. Here, you'll be required to attach the assessment slip provided by the Assessor of Stamp Duty. You can also attach any additional documents that provide more information about the stamp duty service, if any. If you wish to upload a document, type in the name, upload the document by clicking on the Choose File button and it will be listed on the right. Use the Next button to navigate to the verification page. Kindly go through the provided information and ensure the details are correct. You also have the option of going back by clicking on Documents or Application Details if you need to edit any information. If satisfied, go ahead and click on Submit. You'll then get a confirmation message that affirms that the application has been created successfully. Click on Close. At this point, the application will populate under the unpaid invoices. Kindly know that the settlement process for both land and non-land stamp duty invoices is similar. Therefore, we are going to look at how to generate an unland stamp duty invoice before settling the payment. Under stamp duty, click on the second category to generate an invoice for an unland stamp duty. You will be navigated to the applications page that contains the payment history of the unland invoices. For you to initiate a new application, click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. 
you'll then be navigated to the frequently asked questions related to this process. Click on Next and you'll be navigated to the Application Details page. Here, you'll first be required to select the location details in the stamp duty process. Starting with the county, click on the drop down arrow to populate and select the location. You'll also be required to specify the location. Under a land registry, click on the drop down arrow to populate and select the office. Repeat the same steps to fill in the stamp duty process. Here, we are going to select release of a debenture. Furthermore, you'll need to enter the stamp duty fees as stated in the assessment slip. You'll also be required to enter the principal instrument of collateral to debenture. The next section requires you to include party details. First, you'll be required to indicate if the party is registered on a redecessor. If yes, you'll be required to enter their redecessor ID. When you click on the search button, a text box will be displayed requesting you to enter the party description. Click on Add and the system will automatically populate the details. In a case where the party is not registered, the applicant will have to manually key in their personal details. That is, party name, party description, type of identification, identification number, and their carry pin. Click on Add to populate the details. Repeat the process to include all the parties. Use the next button to navigate to the verification page. Go through the provided information and ensure the details provided are correct. You can go back by clicking on the application details if you need to edit any information. If satisfied, go ahead and click on submit. You then get a confirmation message that affirms that the application has been created successfully. Click on close. At this point, the application will populate under the unpaid invoices. Click on the view button to access information captured on the invoice. Kindly note that a penalty of 5% per quarter, that is 3 months, will be charged on the stamp duty payable until the full amount is paid. Use the back button to return to the application invoice page. When you click on pay, the payment information populated below the invoice will have similar features to the one we saw under land stamp duty. For amounts exceeding the M-Pesa limit, you can use the bank or RTGS mode of payment. Immediately after paying, click on the complete button and the system will automatically synchronize your payment. Upon successful verification, navigate to the paid tab to view both the invoice and the receipt. In case your payment does not reflect immediately, get in touch with our customer care team. They will require an invoice and proof of payment such as a bank statement for confirmation of the same. That's it for this tutorial on the invoice generation application using the RPPay system on the Ardisasa platform. Feel free to give your feedback in the comment section below. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notification on new videos as and when we post them. Kindly follow us on our social media handles as well at ardisasa underscore ke on Instagram and X and at ardisasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.